Good morning, <clears throat> Terry Watson, Angry Dentist here. It is Saturday, the 11th of March. But angry, you say? What are you doing recording a video on a Saturday? And the answer is, I'm still at work. I can't believe it. Oh, why don't we just get out of this junction? I've got to go on a Irma course, IR, in open brackets, ME, close brackets, R, course. And it's schedule three, according to the CQC. No negotiation, no debate, it's schedule three. Honestly, as if I don't work, from Monday to Friday, from 8.30 to 5.45 in one of the most stressful jobs on the face of the planet that requires not one, not two, but three essential skills. Manual dexterity, financial acumen, and academic prowess. All three required. Name me another job that requires all three. Go on, go on. But you can't, can you? You can't, can you? All three, you can't, can you? I bet you came up with one that requires two, say. Like, you're like, brain surgeon. Okay, brain surgeon requires your manual dexterity, yes. Academic prowess, yes. Financial genius, no. All employed, all just taking home a wage. Someone else does the payroll. Someone else does the budgeting. Someone else negotiates with the bank manager. Angry, you'll say. Rocket scientist. Uh, let me think. Rocket scientist? Doesn't even work on three, two, one. Lift off. <laughs> Got you there. One, rocket scientist, academic prowess, yes. Manual dexterity? Do you think they build their own rockets? I don't think so. Financial acumen? Usually sponsored by government, aren't they? Out of some massive public sector budget. You know, apart from a bit of schmoozing and uh, cucumber sandwiches, just to confirm next year's budget, not really much financial acumen. Probably wouldn't know the difference between a balance sheet and a profit and loss account. So there I am, working five days, and the CQC and TPTB, the powers that be, have decided that I need to give off my precious, precious Saturday mornings at this time of the year, because spring has sprung, the grass is riz, and I should be out in the garden with Stephen Hancock's, have you seen his YouTube videos, uh, hilarious. How to plant a daffodil. Anyway. So instead, here I am in the car on the way to Canterbury. Canterbury Postgraduate Medical Centre. And that's another thing. I mean, if you are going to... I, I, I do not pick up knowledge from in a classroom situation. Honestly, that is not for me. That is like 2% effective, 2% efficient. The reason, the place I picked up all my knowledge, and I only regret it wasn't invented 10 years earlier, is the internet and computers. When computers were invented, that F1 button for me was a godsend, because if I don't want, need to know anything, then by definition I don't need to know it. And if I do need to know it, I need to know it straight away. And that was the uh, context sensitive help system, that F1 button on, on the computer, absolutely brilliant. Do you know the reason why it is the F1 button, by the way? It's because when people got stuck on computers, they would just start hammering the keyboard. And in the Western world, they tended to start on the top left-hand side and go from hammer every key from the top to the bottom. And the top left key is the escape button. And that uh, was the one that was judged to be most likely to get them out of whatever pro stupid problem they were in. And the next one, was the F1 button. So they made that one the help button. So what happened was you press escape and then F1 help. Anyway, 
it was great because here I was in front of a computer that could actually tell me about itself. It could teach me. You could sit down in front of a computer, know absolutely nothing at all, and just try and do something, press F1, learn how to do that, do something a bit more complicated, got stuck, press F1, it would help you get past that problem. This was when the computer had the, had the help system rather than sort of going on the internet and getting online help and Googling and stuff, that came a bit later. So I am, I am sort of the, I wouldn't say I was the, the Google generation, but I'm a great believer in you don't need, if you don't need to know anything, you shouldn't fill your head up with it, you know. I think these programs like Mastermind are funny. Or, uh, what's the eggs, the eggheads, you know? I mean, these people, they're fantastic to have, I, I mean, I, I agree, it's a memory feat, isn't it? To have all that fantastic knowledge in your head, but is it, I mean, it's a trick, isn't it? I mean, it's a sort of a, it's a parlor trick and very entertaining on telly, but really, you know, I, I have got by without knowing the lineage of the royal family. It really doesn't impact on my day-to-day -day life who uh, that William the Fourth succeeded, George the Fourth succeeded, George the Third, etc., etc. So uh, you know, learn what you need to learn, and what happens is you can then become specialised in, you know, very specialised, because the days of the generalist are over. You know, everyone is is going to be a specialist in their field, aren't they? No one is expected to know everything about everything anymore. The the uh, the old polymath days are are gone. The Bertrand Russell and all that. I suppose even in his day there was there was a lot to learn. So what am I doing? Wasting wasting precious hydrocarbon, transporting myself in a hunk of pressed steel that weighs a ton to another location for someone who's done the same thing to talk to me for four hours about taking a friggin x-ray. Have these people not heard of Google Hangouts? You know, have these people not heard of video recording tuition and just watching a lecture and then answering a few questions at the end of it. I mean, I could have done that. I reckon this four hours is going to be social and clinical. So I think part of the reason why we're all going to the postgraduate centre is because as humans, we're, we're monkeys, aren't we? We're primates. We like to gather and, and have a chat over a cup of tea and, and generally do nothing other than complain about how things are terrible where you are and much worse where you are than where everyone else is and everyone else has it oh lucky but where you are it's so terrible and you can't do this and you can't do that that's what I'm gonna have four hours of that so some of it's social in fact I'd say probably if it, for a four-hour meeting I'm gonna three hours and 30 minutes of it was gonna to need to be social because I can't see that there's you know the sort of knowledge that you need to carry with you when you're taking a short walk and outside press the button and then go back in again you know I'll give you the gist of the course it's going to be uh, don't irradiate anyone unnecessarily that'll be it <laughs> I thought it was going to be more than that actually but now in on consideration I think that just about sums everything up <laughs> And then three minutes thirty of um, I don't know trying to surreptitiously listen to my iPhone, my my uh, Nexus music, uh, uh, um, you know, a podcast on Bitcoin or something. Oh, that was a tragedy, wasn't it, last night? Oh, Securities and Exchange Commission have yes, mate, have turned down the uh, Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund, the Winklevosses, the Winklevosses been down you know they these guys they came up with Facebook someone else nicked it off them they came up with the first Bitcoin exchange traded fund and now they've had that turned down I mean I'm not they're on the yacht eating caviar so I don't feel too sorry for them but uh, 
Anyway, uh, it was thought that uh, an ETF would bring a lot of money into Bitcoin, so we're going to have to wait for that. The reason it was turned down was that it was uh, it's you know it's not sufficiently regulated, and, the, and that's the beauty of Bitcoin is it is not sufficiently regulated. So I don't know whether we'll ever have a Bitcoin ETF. It, it would have brought a lot of money in, but on the other hand, everyone who's expecting it to buy it um, in America through their Roth IRA or via the sort of the family broker. They've stripped this road off prior to resurfacing it. Sorry about all that. I might try and get a different uh, holder as well because this one jumps up and down a lot. It's on a long stalk. You can't see it. It's like a Dalek's eye sticking out of the windscreen. And uh, I might I might get one that's on a shorter stalk. Yeah, so at the, uh, the Fusion organisation, we sort of gave up having social meetings because uh, basically because the members were so sort of spread out all over the country that they didn't really want to, you know, I mean, where's the best place to go? I mean, you could argue that for London, Manchester or Birmingham as a as the best place for a meetup. And who's going to go from London to Birmingham for a, an evening postgraduate talk or something? So um, we do a lot more over the Internet. And that's what these guys should do. They should do this over the Internet. They should. Uh, but as I say, they want to get together. They want to meet their friends and, and have a chat and see how things are going. But I think I'm a firm believer that if you want to have a social meeting, you should have a social meeting. What they should do is they should decide that they're all going to meet at Kent County Cricket Ground and watch the cricket and have a, a social meeting and for the, you know, as far as they can, try not, not to talk about uh, dentistry, or, you know, unless they want to. And then uh, the postgraduate stuff, I think, they really should be done online. So here I am. I have to have an extra bath and uh, scrub up and uh, go to meet a load of people I haven't seen for 15 years, probably. I suppose it'll be interesting because we'll be talking about the grandchildren now. We used to be talking about our children, but now it's all about the grandchildren. I, but I'm the oh I just, yeah, I'm gonna be the naughty boy at the back of the class. I know I am. I'm gonna have to sit at the back of the class. I mean my advice is if you wanna know about Irma, just Google it FFS. If you want to read the regs, I mean go on to the government website, download the statutory instrument and read it. That's the best way. I mean that's the way to sort of a uh, keep an eye on the CQC and make sure they don't get up to anything is to literally read the regs and, and when they say uh, oh no you've got to do this you can say actually no it's, uh, I've got the old Act of Parliament here can just point out to me you know where it says that oh, um, oh yeah well that's uh, that's our interpretation of that oh is it really yeah and when he says um, that you must do this does you does it mean you must or does it mean you should and if it does, it doesn't mean you should, does it mean you must or that you just should? Because sometimes they blur it and they say, you should, you should do this, you should do this. But it's not like a should, you know, you should, you should step off the motorway. If I was you, I should step out of the fast lane. It's like, a, oh, in, in our ideal world, because we know better than you, because we were put on earth to rule the earth, this is how things should work, therefore, you should do this. You should do what we say. Anyway, I might give you a brief update on the way back and let you know how it went. But uh, NASDAQ, the, the Association of Dental Lawyers and Accountants, have the same problem. They have a meeting every year. They have this meeting. It's really useful, and it, you know, it's a flagship event for them. They invite all the movers and shakers in the dental profession to come along and hear about what they've discovered about um, uh, goodwill values and practice sales values and <clears throat> turnovers relative NHS private etc etc and um, you know it sort of starts at I don't know 10 o'clock in the morning now for someone who lives where I live to get into London for 10 o'clock in the morning it's gonna cost me 60 quid and probably take me two hours and then another two hours to get, you know, to struggle back in the rush hour when they finished. And it's all right for them. And they, 
they can sort of rock up early the night before, probably stay in the hotel. Uh, you know, they're there fully uh, airbrushed and uh, dry cleaned in the morning. But um, I'm, you know, I can't spend two hundred pound on a hotel to go along and get a get what get a set of figures on a sheet of A4 paper. That's what it is. It's just, it's honestly, this information is just information, and that's what this is. This is just information. You know, they are. What happened to information technology? What happened to the information age? Anyway, I'm overdoing it a bit now, so it might be brilliant. Who knows? <laughs> I just like to take a negative view of everything in advance because it saves time. I'll talk to you later. All right. <laughs> Bye. Well, that's four hours of my life I'm not going to get back. It was, unfortunately, exactly as uh, forecast. Four hours locked in an airless, underlit room that hadn't been decorated since I qualified. Listening to a bunch of third division speakers read from their PowerPoint presentations. The only bit of light relief was at one point when the projector broke down and the woman who was reading from her slides asked if um, she could, you know, she should carry on just talking from her computer screen and uh, we're all like, yeah, if it hurries you up. <laughs> oh dear. I don't know, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I honestly don't know what to tell you. The 2% of that course was applicable to dental practices. The rest of it was completely padded out by people from the hospital telling us about the problems that they've had to overcome in the hospital, in the medical radiology department in the hospital. So, we're talking about how to how to ensure that you're x-raying the right person if they're unconscious I mean I just I'm just gonna wrap up because I, I can't my brain is numb my bum is numb the seats haven't been upgraded since I qualified The first thing they did was they handed out 50 sheets of paper, which is all their slides, which apparently are so valuable that they've had to be printed out and stapled together and put together in a pack that you're supposed to take home and value so much that you going to create storage space for it in some folder inside some filing cabinet somewhere and treasure it for the rest of your life. So the first thing I said was, can I have this as a PDF? Because at least it's gonna take up some insignificant bunch of digits on some part of my RAID server somewhere. And not, you know, and I'm not gonna keep tripping over it every time I'm looking for the instruction manual for something or other. Anyway, as I say, it all boils down to don't x-ray people more than you need to. But I, d I don't think that the four, three or four people who were teaching this course had any... Uh, have ever, ever been inside a dental surgery and seen how a dental x-ray is taken. Which is, you know, a few other things occurred to me to say during the lecture, but no. I'm just going to sign off now and I uh, hope you had a better weekend than I did and uh, I'll see you next week. Okay, this is Derek Watson, the Angry Dentist, signing off at 70,000 volts.